Hello, everybody. It's me, Demetra Kay, and I am sitting here with Donovan, the recovering Democrat Sadiq, and it is a Demetra K show. In fact, it is the podcast, so I want to say right off the top that we are not live, but we'll be back live a little bit later on. Not sure what we'll talk about, whether it's politics or relationships. Probably politics. I don't know. We'll see. But nevertheless, uh, we use this show to uh, bounce ideas and arguments um, off of each other. Usually we like to talk about relationships or something closely tied to it because, you know, he's a man, I'm a woman, and we often have differing opinions. So it's pretty interesting. We do read the comments and uh, we see that there's, you know, a good divide of, you know, people agreeing or disagreeing or whatever. So that's pretty cool. But like I say, the purpose of the Demetri K show is to promote black love, knowledge, and understanding of all things that go on in the black community to make us an even better people with the emphasis on even because we are great people, but we can always strive to do better. So on this segment, we're going to talk about um, something that I saw in regards to a restaurant that's black owned and they only want to serve people 35 and older. Of course, uh, it's sparking some debate for a whole host of reasons. And we'll get into that. And then I saw something else trending in regards to step parenting and step children and biological children. So we're going to talk about that as well. So Donovan, what say you? All right, you guys, welcome back to the Demetri K Podcast. We are awesome and glad to have you guys back because we learn just as much from you guys as you guys do from us. Again, this uh, podcast is not live, but do us a favor, the African Diaspora News Channel app, it is available on Google Play and uh, the uh, Google Store and Apple Apple Play Store, whatever you call that thing, you can download it, get it. We can talk about our things. If we get enough uh, subscribers there and uh, we, you know, we could get off of this channel and do our own stuff and talk the way we want to talk and be real about what we need to be real about. So the African Diaspora News Channel app, download it today, subscribe, like, become a member. If you don't want to do the app uh, on YouTube, become a member, subscribe, hit that like button, and it helps the algorithm and keeps the message going out there. Also, if you look at the bottom here, we have a scrolling banner. And if you want to donate to keep the uh, content creator motivated to make these great videos, that is uh, various ways you can uh, contribute. You got Cash App, PayPal, Venmo, uh, ch uh, cashier's check, unfortunately, and anything else you guys want to uh, uh, donate to. Um, also with the African Diaspora News Channel, let me just put this out there, Brother Phil and possibly Demetra. Well, Brother Phil is definitely going, but they're going to Ethiopia next year. There are still some openings. If you are interested, they're going to uh, professional tour and guide, you know, guide around Ethiopia. You're going to learn a lot where the real Jews are, all that other good stuff. And you have a possibility to mix it up with uh, Brother Phil. And if Demetra is going to go, Demetra, so you guys can see what's really behind the screen. <laughs> for yourselves and uh, chop it up there. Uh, I, I'm just going to tell you guys uh, that is a great way because, you know, unfortunately, we talk all this black power and African stuff. But in my experience, I have found the least likely people to go to Africa are black people. And it's fact. It's a fact. You, I want to go to Paris. I want to go to. Oh, I want to do this. We are least likely to go to Africa. And I think every black person, in my opinion, should go to and hit the African continent at least once. And Brother Phil and the African Diaspora News Channel is giving you an opportunity to do that. And he's been doing that for the last couple of years. So uh, if you guys are interested, go check it out, download it, get the information, and we'll get back. This is going to be an interesting topic that we're going to talk about here because I have a interesting opinion about it. So let's get to it. All right. So thank you. Thank you for all of that. And again, we appreciate y'all for being here. Again, please uh, be sure to stay tuned at 5 p.m. Central Time. Uh, where we will have our live show. So I'm going to uh, bring this video up. Of course, it's the one in the, regards to the restaurant uh, that is only trying to serve. Well, not trying to. They said that they are going to only serve um, people 35. Well, it's 30 and 35. And I'll let them explain it to you. So here we go. Only the restaurant owner. I think the restaurant owner tells me he wanted a business where people 30 years old and older can go, enjoy, and have a peaceful time. And with that, he says, come age limits. What's up with the brothers? Y'all good? Welcome to Bliss. Two weeks ago, 36-year-old Marvin Pate What's going on? and his wife opened their new upscale restaurant near West Florissant and New Halls Ferry Road in North St. Louis County. It represents pure happiness. 
and pure utopia. It's a home away from home. You could come here and feel like that, that you were actually on a resort. Delicious. Jamaican style. The restaurant's popular West African Caribbean cuisine, lamb chops ready, isn't the only hot topic simmering on social media. People can't stop chattering about the age restrictions at Bliss. Women must be at least 30 years old and men 35 to enter the business. It's just something for the older people to come to and have a happy hour, come get some good food and not have to worry about some of the young folks that bring some of that drama. And of course, we have been getting a little backlash, but that's okay, because we're sticking to our code. Everyone who enters the restaurant will have to show their ID to a hostess or a St. Louis County police officer after 7 p.m. Wednesday through Sunday. He has a policy that suits the clientele that he's trying to draw in. I think he's on the right track. Those are younger ones, you can come patronize the business once you turn 30 or 35 because we're going to be here for a while. Okay, so as you saw there, um, they, they, he says he's looking for a certain clientele, right? Now, one could ascertain a whole lot of stuff from that, what kind of clientele that is. But I actually saw this on Jamel Hill. You guys know she's a sports uh, caster, journalist, and a whole host of other things. I know her Instagram, she says, as a business owner, you want to appeal to a certain clientele and you also want to set a standard. On the other hand, this does feel a bit anti-Black. While I know this restaurant didn't spell out that this was directed at Black people, think we can all read the room on this one. I also don't like us trafficking in the same stereotypes often used against us by other folks course you know he did say he's looking for a certain clientele as i said i guess one can maybe draw a bunch of conclusions from that um 30 for the women 35 for the men uh west african uh, jamaican caribbean cuisine is what it is so donovan what's your opinion on that well first of all again jamel hill i don't even want to say how ridiculous she sounds this has, this has nothing to do with race. He didn't mention race. You could be any race you want to be to patronize that restaurant. So why is she bringing up race? I, I just, that, that, that just irks me because he's not being discriminatory because if, if you're, according to his age requirements, anybody could come in there. It's just, I just hate when, when they throw that in there. For as intelligent as she's supposed to be, she's pretty stupid. But, um, He's targeting a certain demographic. And Jamel Hill, she knows what she really wants to say, but she doesn't want to say it. And it seems to me it's because of the sisterhood. She knows, she knows why that graphic is there because she alluded to it. I feel because it's going to be like that. She knows that sometimes, and what has been going on in our community, the younger crowd sometimes get a little into themselves and they're twerking on tables and they're doing things like that. She knows what the hell's going on. So, you know, she shouldn't be even playing that. He's He has a right to target a certain demographic because let's, let, let's figure it out. When you're a little bit 30, 35, you're a little bit older, you dress a little bit better, you ain't got your pants sagging, the atmosphere is relaxed. Now, Demetri and I, in high school back in the day, there was a known club and it was probably the only club you can get into when you're like about to graduate high school. It was, it was like gonna be the first club you're ever gonna go to. It's like a rite of passage. It was called the Metro and it was 18 and above. Right. And everybody went. As soon as you could turn 18, you went over there and you thought you were you, you were the business. Right. Look, like Demetri got flashbacks. <laughs> met her baby. She, she met her baby daddy over there. So uh, doing the thing. So there's nothing wrong with these. It has nothing to do with color. It has nothing to do with color. It, it has to do with how many problems do you want? How many problems do you want? Right now, the metro is closed and it's been closed for almost 25 years now. It's been a while. Why did it close? Because younger people were acting up in the club that ended up in fights, shootings, all kinds of stuff was going on. So how do you alleviate problems like that as a uh, restaurateur or a business owner? You put certain restrictions there. It's just like voting. Voting, you, anybody in America could vote if you got an ID. What's the problem? Everybody's got an ID. 
So what, what does race have to do with it? If you got an ID and it says that you, you meet that requirement, you could come into the club. He's not restricting it. I just think it's another example of a super duper Democrat shield trying to in, invict race into every situation, uh, identity politics. And, you know, and that's what it comes down to. There are not enough establishments for older people like ourselves. Well, Dimitri, you, you, you're in the group that they won't let in. But, <laughs> see, see, but you, you guys, you see what I'm saying? I mean, as an older person, I, am, I can't even go to clubs because of the shenanigans that go in there. I, I can't even go. And there's not enough clubs that cater to people like myself who do have money, but we have no place to go to spend it. Um, I, I, I agree with you. Um, cause I didn't see any, he didn't say it was, you know, this certain race of people. However, I kind of, and, and you know, I got my issues with Jamel Hill. Okay. I get where she's going with it, though. And I, this is the only time I'm going to use this phrase. So y'all forgive me. I know some of y'all going to get your drawers and your panties in a bunch. I don't mean for you to do that. Listen, I had a nap this morning because I got up early. So I got a little bit more energy. Um, I, I think what they're saying without saying it is that they don't want no nigga shit. Okay. Let's just keep it a buck. All right. I mean, I'm just going to keep it a buck. I think that's what they're saying. And they're saying it in a classy way. You know, we were looking for a certain clientele. But that's what they're saying. And what do I mean by that? Like Donovan said, well, you, and, and unfortunately, some of the older people be with the stuff too, but usually it's the younger people that uh, don't know. Because Donovan, you and I are old enough to remember where a, a, an establishment or a restaurant said, no uh, jacket, no service, right? That means you have to have men have to come in with a jacket. Women have to say, have, have a certain thing on. They didn't want you to have jeans and tennis shoes, right? They wanted the clientele to reflect the atmosphere that they built. And so unfortunately you do. I mean, the turkey leg hut is a perfect example, right? Of them having to make the dress code because they uh, illustrated people going in with see-through things and stuff all jugged up in every cre uh, crevice and stuff. And people forget, especially like a turkey leg hut, everybody can go there, it's family oriented. And I've been there a couple of times. Usually everybody want to come out of town, come from out of town, they want to go there. So I've seen some things it's like, Sister, you think you should have wore that out the house? But all right, you know, so I get where they're going with that. Also, as an older person, when you go out to a restaurant and it's uh, all ages, sometimes people bring their badass kids. So Donovan, you might be taking the missus out to a nice dinner. You've worked hard and she's cooked all week or whatever. You want to show her a good time and y'all having the filet mignon. Oh, baby, you look so good. Oh, when you get home, I'm going to treat you like a trampoline. But in the background, you hear, yeah, yeah, yeah. kids running around and stuff. So nobody wants to deal with that. Also, with certain clientele. Now, this could be any race, but we know this is our people a lot is you're going to bring a weft of weed in with you. You probably don't want a tip, or you're going to be arguing over the bills. It's going to be 30 of you, and y'all going to be splitting. I just had a water and some bread. Why well, I got to pay. And, you know, so listen, let's not act like these things don't happen. I don't dine out with people like that. But I'm saying we know that stuff happens. And so I guess in a roundabout way, if, if we want to talk about race, Maybe he is saying, I want y'all to come in here and do what y'all would do with the white folks restaurant. Because like you said, Donovan, we have seen a video or two of people twerking and getting loud and acting crazy and, you know, the, the, all of that. So what he is saying is I want to avoid those things. And I feel like if you are 30 or 35, maybe you've outgrown the, the nigga. Okay, I use the word twice. Maybe you've outgrown that and you're going to come and you're going to sit down. Maybe you're at the age where you're courting. you got a husband and you're serious. and So you ain't about the foolishness. So I don't hate, I love it. I would love to go to an establishment where they got rules like that. Um, although when the people, some of the people I saw in there, you know, they had on a t-shirt where so it don't seem like they was enforcing a dress code, but it's, that's what he's saying. Let's leave that off and come in here and eat these oxtails or whatever you're going to do. Have a good time and go spread the word. Absolutely. But like I said, it, it, it's it's crazy how we make everything an issue. It's this man's establishment. He can do what he wants. 
uh, you can't sue a private entity for discrimination. I mean, you can try, but you're not going to win because he's, you know, they're going to come up with, no, that's my code or this, this, that, whatever. These uh, discrimination laws is only good in uh, government entities. That's the only time you can sue and kind of do all that. And you got to prove it and all this other stuff. But here's the thing. And, and it's true. And it's true. I have yet to run across any human being on the planet of the earth that doesn't get dressed up and doesn't feel like a million dollars. When you when you're dressed up and you you got your best on whatever your whole mood changes your whole attitude changes because number one you got your best clothes on so you ain't going you don't want to fight in your best clothes even though back in the day and I kind of miss this on YouTube and stuff the old Waffle House fights that that was my thing back in the day but anyway <laughs> how many of you guys remember the Waffle House fights that was great but anyway <laughs> but 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 it's true though but. Uh, in society, okay, I come from a military background. Mil Demetra comes from a military background. In every organization of the military, you had a lower enlisted man's club, you had a higher enlisted man's club, and then you had the officer's club, right? And they did that because people are at different stages in your life. Demetra will tell you right now, the funnest club you can go to was that airman's club, especially if you were in that age group because you guys are doing the same thing, thinking the same way, whatever. But the good thing about the base is it's more secured. You know, you, you can't, you can't act up there cause you got a sponsor and all that, but you had fun, you know, you, and do these things. So in the civilian world, you know, more power to the young people. I, I want young people to have fun and do stuff, uh, you know, just, you know, like everybody else and enjoy your life, but let's be real people. Sometimes you guys come with the stuff, you guys come with the stuff and it, it, makes it bad for everybody else. Why Why is it because you don't know how to act that I can't have a good time? And like I said, this man is establishing something. And I, you know what, Demetri, I think this is going to become a trend because if I was a businessman, I'm going to target the people that have the actual money. And I'm not saying young people don't have money, but I'm talking about people that have the money that we know that are probably gainfully employed. Another good example, and Demetra and I talk about this all the time with the young ladies. Why not go on a, a military base? You know, they got benefits and they got a guaranteed check. That's a smart thing to do. I'm not saying the brothers in the, you know, out there they ain't doing it, you know, striving. They're not doing well either. But you know, a military person's got fast. You know, they got it. Whereas this person, you don't know, you know, you don't really know where this guy's getting his dough. He might be working two jobs and whatever, doing a little street pharmacy on the side, whatever. But it comes with the stuff. And and I I think that um you got a lot of people that are older, and I just don't want to go to a young club because it's dangerous or it's it's uh packed. And um did uh there was something recently on YouTube that I saw. Did you see where Red Man and Method Man went to some 97 like sound stages, some concert in New York. And they were the only old school act that was like on the bill or whatever. And the people weren't jumping because it was like everybody was with a new era. They were kind of out thing. And Method Man said he will never return to the 97, whatever it was. And, and this is the type of stuff that, that, that we're talking about, people. For us older people, hey, I, I would have loved to seen Red Man. That would have made me go. But for the younger people, I don't expect them to know who Red Man is and all that, you know, and, you know, and Method Man and all these people. They, they're not going to jump the way we would jump, right, Demetra? And so that's the way it's getting because, again, you got a lot of us that are up here. We're getting open age and we don't have a lot of venues to go to without having the, again, nothing against the young people because I was young at one time too. I don't know. When I listen to the radio, it sounds like Vietnamese to me. I don't even know what's being said. I, you know, I, I, uh, drill music. I don't understand it. It's like it's it's past my era and whatever. And so I'm not gonna go to a club, Demetra. You remember we used to go to a club, and they played the fast music, but they also played the slow drags. You go to these young clubs now. It's boom, 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 boom constantly and the women are dancing with the women and the men are dancing with the men and i'm just like what is this are they going to slow it down hey dj slow it down i'm trying to get next to they don't do that no more so yeah we need more clubs to cater to older people that actually are retired or want to relax with their uh you know their lady and their man and just kind of just chill you know so let's yeah let's start having more clubs like that 
Yeah. Um, you know, I agree with that. And I know some people probably demonize that man and, you know, him and his wife, they both made the, it that way. But I think if it is about race, and I, th I think it is because I, th I think it's uh, fair enough to say that black people patronize black businesses and restaurants and, you know, everywhere else, right? White people, Asians, whatever. Um, and I think what they're saying without having to say it because people get all in their feelings is, you know, we don't want y'all to come over here and do the most because we tend to do that to our own people. We get in our own people stuff or whatever it is. We want to haggle and bargain and discounting and, you know, uh, acting a fool and, and splitting the bills. And I know, you know, people everywhere do that. It, it, all people do that everywhere. But I will say I'm just talking about us. We do that kind of stuff, you know. So I think he, what he's saying is, nah, don't come over here and, and, and act in a fool, you know. So I'm going to raise the limit because you do want to keep out a certain, let's keep it a buck. I'm not saying that the people below 30 are riffraff, but sometimes they do have that mentality. And these, these people nowadays, they are so far from reality or anything of anything that has anything to do with cooth or any of that stuff. They just, just whatever, you know. So I get that. I, I get him drawing the line of me, line of me demarcation. Like, no, like the, the waitress said, when you turn 30 or 35, yeah, you could come up in here. But until then, you are not welcome here. Um, there's other places you could go for here. We are building that clientele. It's like Mercedes. They have a certain clientele. Rolls Royce have a certain clientele. You want to go drive a Rolls Royce or test drive it? Great. I mean, even with anything now, you're going to leave your license, but they're going to do a little bit more research on you to let you get up in a vehicle, right? So it's like, I don't have a problem with that certain clientele, especially if you're an older person. Older people, Glotadine and Melvin, they want to go have some oxtails. They don't want to be out there with you and your crowd. And you're smelling like weed and you're dressing like hookers and, you know, the, and people ray raying them on the corner with your pants sagging your white beater then first of all what they're also saying is chilling in the parking lot yeah i, I don't want to have to have a conversation with you about your behavior so i feel like if you a certain age then yes you that we're not gonna have to have that conversation with you you know like i said i don't go out with people who want to haggle over the bill and why well, we got to leave a tip and tip ain't fun nah because what I, first of all, you ain't finna embarrass me. And I don't even want to know or be around people who have that mentality of, well, why? And this and that. But we didn't. Nah, nah. And you got it. You got it. You don't stay your ass at home. But you're not coming with me to embarrass me. So I forget where the place is. I don't eat meat. Maybe they have some vegan options. But I would love to go and, you know, and see how it is. But don't get that man and his wife a hard time because they don't want the riffraff going up in there and because one thing i forget i think it was dr claude anderson he says um or somebody says along with us having grand openings we also have grand closings and that's what i think they're trying to say y'all not gonna have us have a grand closing before we want to close with the the, the inward stuff because what happens is when you hear about uh, we hear about all the time in different places the waffle house is one which you know if you go into the waffle house it's probably going to be a rock of sock them and people kind of go for that. Yeah, I was there. But it doesn't take much for something to ruin your reputation. You know, I, I love to go over there, but I heard they be naked and all kind of stuff over there at Bliss. So I ain't going to go. Right. So I, I'm not mad at them. I'm not. You know, and again, you know, it's nothing against the young people. You guys are living your lives and you guys are living your era. Hey, yes, I'm all it is. It. Yeah, yeah, you know, and I'm all for it. I am all for young people being what they want to do. But again, uh, I was talking about the metro earlier. This is what I mean about not enough older establishments to where you know older people can go and just enjoy themselves. Uh, Demetri and I went to a uh, retro metro gathering. Demetri, how many uh, old ladies? Uh, not old ladies, but older ladies went and got their 90s dresses and snuck into their cat suits and stuff. And the brothers that had the jerry curls like me, the little, you know, the curly tops were all in there bald now and stuff like that. But we were there and we had a good time. 
it was a really good time for us to, re, you know, remember how it used to be, whatever, you know, yeah, you're a little bit bigger, you're a little bit, you know, what, you know, some of us still are still delusional. We still think we got it, <laughs> and, but we had a good time and, and, and it was uh, something, you know, Demetra was dancing uh, all, I mean, she went out there and just did, did her thing. Her song came on. She was out there doing it, <laughs> networking, bringing all the dances back, you know, but having a good time. So, uh, the thing is, it isn't always about a, a racial thing, but, uh, you know, Demetra and I argue this all the time. And a lot of the ladies in the chat, we always get into it. And I always say this on this earth, on this planet, in this universe, we know what the truth is. The truth is what you see out front, outside your door. When you go to the, uh, you know, neighborhood why is it that you got a liquor store in every corner and then there's a church and across the church is a strip club? That only happens in our neighborhoods. That's the reality. And the reality is we know some of us are on that BS. And we just got to, you know, we just got to accept it. And if we're, we're going to be opening these great businesses, we got to, unfortunately, start enforcing these rules if we're going to be successful. Because how long do you think that restaurant is going to remain open if you let 18, 19 uh, year old Thundercats up in there? It's not going to be open long. And then there, there's another great possible black business gone out of the black community or wherever community is. But those black dollars aren't in our community. Yeah. You know, um, and like I said, I, it is, for me, it is uh, against the younger crowd. I love y'all younger people, but some of y'all ain't got the sense God gave a cricket. You don't you don't think you don't care. You just do and say anything. You probably learned it from your mamas and daddies. But nevertheless, y'all think you're more important than any and everything uh, outside of yourself. You, you don't, you know. And so, I, like I said, I, I wish more establishments would do that. And that way it'll give you something to aim for. Now, I'm not saying all younger people act like that because I didn't act like that when I was younger, right? But it'll give you something. <laughs> I didn't. It'll give you something to aim for, right? Okay, when I'm 30. I'm going to be able to go up in there. Just like when we was younger, we heard about the, the Metro. When we, like you said, we would turn 18. It was a rite of passage or whatever. I'm in that thing now, whatever. Even then, there was clubs 25 and older. Some clubs are 35 and older, whatever the case is. And so it gave you something to strive for. And more importantly, it's like, okay, let me work on me. Let me get, you know, my grown and sexy on. Because that's what a lot of uh, places uh not saying that about that restaurant, but they they aim for that. The grown, the emphasis on grown. Okay, sexy is a, you know an eye to beholder, but the emphasis on grown. Come up in when you're grown, because when usually when you're grown, you got something to lose, right? When you're grown, you care about how other people see you when you're in them streets. Which is why when I go to somewhere like Walmart or something like that, I'm like, y'all just be out here, just y'all looking like that out here. You don't care. Like, listen, I said, sometimes I go when I be working out. I, I, yeah, I'm looking busted and dusted and disgusted. I, yes, I am. Obviously, you, you've, you're you going from the gym because of the attire you got on. Or I'm outside, right? My, my tennis shoes are dusty because I'm walking on trails that are dusty. Okay, I don't care about that, but I'm not going to just be home all day. I will go to the store and just go out there, hair sticking all over the place and pajama drawers on. And uh, No, nah, I'm, I'm going to go out there looking like I care so you know, as I said, for some of the and it'd be the older people too, but the, uh, some of the younger people, y'all got a long way to go, especially the younger people nowadays. Y'all not young like we used to be young. When we were young, we had our own places. We, we knew what it was like to have to pay the rent, the car note, the electricity, put food in the refrigerator. Well, like those are the responsibilities I had when I was in my twenties. You know, but there's a lot of younger people. Who don't have those responsibilities? They don't even know when the damn light bill is due because they don't pay it. So, I, again, I, I, big ups to that man and his wife for setting the standard. And since Jamel made it about race, okay, let's go with that. But to say that it feels anti-black, is it anti-black or is it anti, one more time, y'all, nigga shit. Because all black people don't act that way. But what I just said, they do. So, why are we mad? Well, I have a quick question for you. If it's about race and stuff, so all the VFWs across the United States should be closed down because they, they only let certain people in there. See what I'm saying? Oh, it's yeah. all it's all subjective and, and how you how you want to do it. To be in the VFW, you got to be escorted if you're not a member. And to me, it's no different what this man is trying to do. 
And when you're older, unfortunately, for us older folks, that is one of the last vestiges that we can go and have peace without stuff jumping off at the VFW. Yeah, you know, um, and I don't think because a lot of people don't know what it's like to invest in something, they don't know what it means to protect that investment at all costs. And so I'm sure with opening a restaurant, a black owned restaurant, I'm sure they've done, they seem older, so they, they know, they ain't stupid. You know, they've done some research, whether it was deep diving analysis or just something preliminary on their own experiences. And they're like, no, nah, we're going to make something successful. We got to make it to where the the big the big spenders, because the big spenders are the people that's typically probably 35 and older. They got a career and they got some money or whatever. So they want to come in there and really engage in the experience. Right. And so that's the clientele that they care more about. Not these little teeny boppers, you know, that's, you know, working at Amazon and no shade to nobody doing that because I've worked there before. Working at Amazon, you living with your mom and daddy and you're going to go out to brunch with your homies and y'all going to get drunk on mimosas, go in there and have to be kicked out. Because when you're there, then the people that got the money that wants to come and bring their wife once a week or every two weeks, then they get scared off. And we rather just see y'all younger people when you're old enough and you've gotten all that nonsense about your system, because we need the big, the, the, what they call the bread basket community. That's the uh, age group of the thirties and like 35 to 45 ish. That's what they call the bread basket where they're now saving for a bread basket. They're building, you know, a legacy, whether they're buying a home or savings. So that crowd tends to care more than them younger people. Yeah, I, I I call that 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 group of people the the tax base. Those are the people paying like probably got pr property taxes, and you know they're they're more serious about where they're at in life. You know, these are the people that are working, paying into everything that you know you got it. And and that's the thing, we don't cater to those that demographic. It's just it's just not happening. These people have more pressure on them in uh, supporting the community. Because let's face it, if, if you don't have the money and you know and and you're on government assistance, that's one half of the sphere. Then you got the ultra rich. Everybody forgets about the middle, which is that group of people who are actually holding up society. So like the schools, the uh, government entity. You know, these are the people that that you gotta really start catering to. And again, if you look at it, there's really not a lot of places for these people. They can go and enjoy. Uh, they're all that work that they do and you have no you have nowhere to go i mean it's just it's you know it's it's sad but yeah the metro it brings back a lot of memories a lot of memories a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of memories but like a rite of passion and, and it's so sad that the young people they don't know they don't know what it's like to strive and say you know what one day i'm going to get into that club i'm going to go see so and so when i turn 18 or whatever the group is yeah you want to you know you want to work for something Everything can't be given to you guys. And I know you guys, are you've been raised in that generation where with mom and daddy can't give it to you. I'll go to grandma and grandpa. They'll give it to me. That isn't how the real world, 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 world works. And sometimes us older people, we want our own, excuse my language. We want our own itch. Okay. We want our own stuff. We, we don't want to be around y'all. We're around you. We, we, we're around these damn grandkids. You're dropping the grandkids off on us, whatever. We don't have a life. Just, just give us our little area. And I wish Bliss a lot of success in what they're doing. And I hope more uh, establishments uh, come up, at least within the communities, so that we can just decompress. I'm trying to, um, I'm going to send this to me. I thought I did, but my computer rearranged, so I have to send it again so I can see it. Hold on, let's see. Yeah, I think the computer did an upgrade last night or something like that. The uh, Steam Yard. Yeah, it's my whole computer is just like it's all over the place. It's like that TRS eighty. I told you you need to you know get get with the times. The TRS eighty. Remember the old green screen when we were in high school? Really? <laughs> and you can play Hangman. <laughs> ah, where did it go? If not, I'll just oh there it is. It's coming in right now. Let's see. Okay, so but where did you go? Um, let me see. Hold on a second. So anyway, while she's figuring yeah. that out, 
Um, how many of you guys have heard that the ANC in Africa, and I'm giving you some information from the African Diaspora News Network as they drop, drop gems. The uh, ANC in, Af in Africa, the party of Mandela, that actually since apartheid, they've been in complete control in South Africa. They have to form a coalition government for the first time since post-apartheid. And that is a humdinger. And it's showing that the young people are now coming of age to do and have a say. Almost 40 years of uh, post-apartheid and black people are still basically in the positions that they were uh, in since the end of apartheid. And so now the ANC has lost all this momentum. And the reason I'm bringing this up, you guys, is I want you to look at the civil rights era people. All of the, everything that they did, which was phenomenal, look at where we're at today. And this is why I say what happens over there is the same thing over here. Look at the parallels. Right now, the civil rights generation, people are turning their backs as it seems that the civil rights generation is just worried about their generation and that's it. And here we are today. So uh, pay attention to that as you guys uh, do that. So what is going on here? So sorry about that. Now, I don't even know if this is the actual lady, uh, but I've seen her picture on this passage going around quite a bit. So this says, my husband wants to take his biological child on a trip for graduating in eighth grade but not his stepchild, who is also grady, I mean, graduating rather, eighth grade. I'm upset he doesn't see why. How do I make him understand? So again, they, sounds like they're married. She has a child and uh, her husband has a child, only wants to take his child on a trip for graduating eighth grade, but not want to take her child that's also in the eighth grade graduating. She's upset that, and he doesn't understand why. Donovan, how does she make him understand? What's going on here? Okay, this isn't going to be popular, but ladies, I'm just going to say it. What is there to understand? What is there to understand? Now, okay, I'm going to give you the, the, the political answer. Yes, he should treat his stepchild and his child the same, whatever the deal is. But most men don't do that, right? Better question. This, And I'm going to assume that this stepchild has a father himself. Would his stepfather take his child on a vacation and, and, and celebrate with him. Men think differently. See, and that's how men think. If I was in that situation, I wouldn't have done it. I would take them both. I wouldn't give a damn, right? But this is how men think, ladies. And you guys got to get over it. You got to get over it. Yes, that, th both of those child children came out of you. So you have a, a certain attachment to it. But men do not. Like I said, I, I'm married to you, but this is my child. I'm going to do for my child. Why isn't the father of that child doing for him? That's how men look at it. Okay. And it, that's just how we're programmed. Should he take both of them? Yes, he can. But I can almost guarantee you in that situation, he's thinking, well, he's got a daddy too. So would his daddy take my child to where he's going? Most likely, no, he's not going to do that. Right. So I, to me, what is there to understand? This man is going to do for his biological child, and he's going to let the biological child of his stepchild do for him, period. Yeah, um, I, I kind of see it a little bit differently. That's why it's important to know who you're marrying, who you are you know, involved with, because if you're taking your child, at, see, I wouldn't want somebody to, to marry somebody or somebody to marry me and not see my child also as theirs. I know it's a little bit different because you feel just a little bit differently about your biological than you do your stepchildren. But I wouldn't want to marry somebody that I didn't uh, feel like I should do just as much for their child as I do for mine. And so um, I I don't think you can get him to understand because you should have understood. Understand the uh, comprehension is not on him at this point. The comprehension was on her before they got married. Hey, I have a child. You have a child. Are you going to see my child, you know, uh, as important as your child? It's like I will see your child as, you know, as important or whatever the case is. See, those are the questions you're supposed to have up front. You don't wait until you get to that point and then your children are graduating. And then he's like, oh, we're off to Africa. We'll see y'all when we get back. And she says, well, my, you know, what about Johnny? He's graduating too. That's too bad. So sad. You know, 
I wouldn't be married to somebody like that because you wouldn't want me to do that to your child. Now, I get it. Maybe you want to just, you know, be different too. If you want to say, hey, I want to just be us or whatever. Um, okay, whatever. Then you do you and then we'll go do something, whatever the case is. But uh, you're rewarding one for doing the same thing that they're both doing. Yeah, I, 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 I honestly have a problem with that. It sounds like uh, a little bit selfishness. And it sounds like he doesn't care for either her or the stepchild as much. You know what I mean? Because I will feel bad just personally knowing that I took one child. They're doing the same exact thing. It'd be different if they were doing certain, certain different things. But they're doing the same exact thing. I take one. I will feel bad like to come back. And now this kid and his father or her father is looking at me like, you really didn't care about us like that, you know? So those are the questions you get uh, answered up front. How are you going to see my child? How am I going to see your child? But see, this is the problem. And I'm going to speak to some of you. I'm going to speak to you women. Not, not the us, but them over there, okay? That's what happens when you're only enamored with sex. When you're only enamored with swag. And you're only enamored with lip service and all that other stuff, right? Because when you're enamored by that, you don't stop and see or ask, are you with me and only me? Or are you, because I'm a package deal, boo. You can't just be with me and, and, and separate my children. That's not how it works. And why would you want to? Why would you want to separate me from my children who were here before you or whatever the case is? And so, you know, find out if that man is there for you and the children, because you can't be there for just the children. And I know there's a lot of people, men and women, I don't want to be with the kids. I don't need to know the kids. I'm with, with they mama. I'm with they daddy. Use a sorry sucker. Use a sorry so-and-so that you would lay down with a man or a woman and you don't care about their children. And But the, you're not the sorriest one in the equation. The person that allows you to do that is the sorriest one. Because see, I'm one of those people. I got good antennas. I'm going to know if you feel a certain way about my child and I'm not going to hang out with you because you, I don't want you to tolerate my child because you with me. I want you to, to care for my child as much as you care for me because I'm going to care for your child just the same. But stop laying down with these people because, well, you know, he got a day. I always, always tell the man I was with, my daughter got a father. She's not looking for, I'm not looking for you to be her father. But what I am looking for you to do is treat her with dignity and respect. And she's going to do the same. But you, I'm not looking for you to replace him. But you're not coming in here or wherever we are and ignore my daughter because you feel like you just with me. I don't think so. You, you could kick rocks with open uh, toe shoes as far as I'm concerned when it comes to mind. You know, the, the sad thing about that is, like I said, in, in, that, in this scenario, she's married to her husband. OK, they're married. And in that scenario, you know, he should treat them the same, whatever. But if he doesn't, that's no big deal either, because that's how men think. Hey, my child is my child. He has a father. He let his father do for him. If that's how it is. Like I said, we don't know the whole dynamics of that. But let's say 70 percent of black households are, are held by women or led by women. Right. So we got 70 percent of the women now. Some women have multiple uh, fathers of their children. We're not talking about married people. We're talking about single mothers with multiple fathers of their children. Would you say that analogy that you use would be the same in regards to a man? Okay, so let's say your sister and uh, I got together, we're dating or whatever, or we're not even dating, but we had a child together and she had a child with uh, two other dudes hypothetically. And I come over to pick up my child. So are you saying that I should pick up all of the, the other two children as well and take them on a, on a treat, whatever you, you, you see what I'm saying where I'm going with that? I, I know because, because you're not in the household with them. You're coming to get your child. But if you are with a woman and that's the situation, the children that are in the household with y'all, cause I'm assuming maybe that's the case. I don't know if the, if her, his child lives with them. I don't know. Um, but if you're in a house with those children, I think you should treat them accordingly, you know? But if you come to get your children, yeah, you're not obligated to take her other children. Yeah, she has fathers for that. But, you know, I had a, a stepfather. 
And my father, uh, he came and picked us up. He loved all my little brother and all that. So my bro little brother is significantly younger than the rest of us. He loved all my brother, played with him and all that other stuff. He never made him feel like an outsider. And my stepfather, he never uh, made us feel like, well, I ain't taking care of y'all. My, my stepfather, um, and I call him stepfather just in reference to make the line of demarcation between my father and him, but I called him dad because he took care of the house. He took care of the school clothes. And I, I never, ever once ever heard him say, those ain't my kids. I never heard him say that. So I, but that, I but that, but that's somebody inside that. the house. But uh, uh, my, my, my question is, if I'm outside that, we're, okay, let's, let's say I'm married to your sister. So what obligation does the other child's father have in regards to doing whatever he needs to do in regards to? Well, that doesn't, that doesn't mean that the father is not present in that child's life. But if you're, I, I mean, I can see where she would be salty. You're taking, you know, one child, but you're not taking the other. Why not? You know? So I don't, I don't know what his reasoning is. I guess we'd have to know that, but I just think that's the kind of stuff you should know before you get in, in, into it. What are, what are the rules here? How do I see your children? How do you see my children? Um, or whatever the case is, but I know, and I'm going to say this from a woman's point of view, cause it's just true. There are a lot of men, um, who don't care about that woman's child and that woman won't don't care that he doesn't care. I, I, I got a man now, you know, I'm not going to run him off. And then these women, some of these women allow the man to beat the kids and do and say all kinds of stuff to the children because she don't want to run him off or whatever. But like I said, I, I see, I've always been one of those women and mothers that were uh, in tune with my motherly instinct. You, especially when it came to my child, I, I could tell somebody's feeling a certain way about my child or whatever, and I'm going to move accordingly. So, like I said, I was never one of those women that was going to choose no man over my child. You know, whatever the case is. Now, different if we married, of course, we know the man comes first and all that other stuff. But somebody I'm dating, hell to the no. You know, you don't you don't have that much uh, presence in my life until, you know, you, you illustrate that you want to go farther with me. But we're that's why it's called blended. It's called a marriage because you're marrying everything together you're just not marrying your body parts together you're marrying the children the money the everything everything is getting merged together so that's her fault for not knowing that the type of man she's dealing with now again it might be different if the child lives outside of the home and maybe he wants to rule okay that may be a little different but if they live in the same house and hey we're i'm taking my child to do something and i'm not taking yours then i can see why she's salty but uh, but again, the, the key word that, that you said there was uh, uh, how men, you know, you, you're basically paraphrasing how, how men think. And this is what women don't understand. We prioritize our legacy, not another man's legacy. So then not, why get married then? Well, exactly. Like I said, at the end of the day, it's her fault. But the point is, men in general, we prioritize our legacy, not another man's legacy. And, and I, I wish more women would understand that. And I know, you know, it, we know what it should be. Oh, it should be blended. Everything's great. No, because again, everything costs resources. And that's how men think. We, like I said, I'm going to take care of mine, not, you know, this. I get it. They don't yeah. make men like they used to. Because I think, of, even think about somebody like Shaq. We know Sarge wasn't his biological dad. You know, uh, Sergeant Phil or however he, you know, he, 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 Shaq realized, recognized him as his dad. That was his stepfather. His stepfather came in and, took over the job of the father and made Shaq who he was. So he didn't, and and when Shaq talks about all the things he's done, his stepfather is, you know, Sarge is connected to his legacy. And I'd imagine when Sarge was raising Shaq, he's like, this is my legacy. So unfortunately we tie blood to legacy instead of influence and the people we, you know, have, mentored and all those other things and so like i said i had a good stepfather i did i know a lot of other people who did too i and, had a horrible one but go ahead <laughs> yeah so but but i know and i'm just saying they don't make men like they used to there was men who would say hey these are my i'm i'm raising these children as my own they didn't well i got a legacy you ain't really my kids and I, I, nah betty i'm with you you what would rufus do Okay, with Claudine. What what would Rufus do? We should Claudine have yeah, fun. That's a movie, <laughs> But but again, I, I like I said, I I I know 
for women, men should just do that. You see, and, and, and that's what kills me about women. You guys are always telling us, you guys are always telling us how to be men because again, you're not men. And I'm not saying that that's what you're saying, but the point is we do, we do not value other men's children. We don't. And when I say value, like I said, you had a good stepfather back in the day, a stepfather was something to be respected. You know, that was a, a great thing to do. Those days are long since gone because a lot of dudes have, you know, it, it's just, it, it's just not advantageous in today's climate with financing and all this other stuff, how things are, are, are going um, between men and women in the United States and the Western world. But men in general, we value our legacy, not another man's legacy. It, it's almost like a cuckoo bird. A lot of people don't understand what a cuckoo bird is. A cuckoo bird will take their egg, lay it in the nest of another bird and have that bird raise their child. And, you know, it, 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 it's just, we just don't value it. I mean, subconsciously you say, yeah, yeah, whatever. But if you think about it from a man's perspective, it, and I'm not talking about people that are married. Like I said, it, when you when you take a woman and her, and her package, that's what it comes with the package. So it ain't like he didn't know. So I'm not talking about those guys. I'm talking about the average dude with, with most of our women, 70% of our women not being married and a lot of, and I think more men are, are less married than, than there are women out there. So what I'm talking about is those type of people. It costs resources to take care of somebody else's seed. And that's what it's, it's so sad that families have come down to economic money. And, and that's, that's what I think is one of the biggest problems because, you know, kids cost. So if this kid's not mine, I'm going to worry about mine. That's why I have like some friends and, and relatives. And I would see like the one father come pick up the one child, his child, and then leave the other. And I'm thinking that's fun. You know, in my mind, I'm thinking that's messed up because you're just going to go get an ice cream down, down, down the street. It ain't like you're going to Disneyland where it's going to cost you all these resources. But I get it as a man. You fundamentally think I'm just worried about mine. That's it. Yeah. So I have a couple of things. Um the dad, I, the, uh, I'm not a man, so yeah, but I had good examples as for uh, as men, my, my fathers, um, uncles, you know, brothers, and just you know a whole host of other men. Like I said, y'all know I worked at Frito Lay, and I I, I was around mostly men because the department that I work in was more men. I was like one of the only few women in the department, so I had a lot of great examples to draw from, and I know plenty of fathers who were stepfathers um, and they were good and they took care of the, the, the woman and the children and they didn't draw a line or anything. So I only have those examples to draw from uh, men who I saw uh, do that. Also, um, if and this is just an honest question, it's a rhetorical. If men are so interested in legacy, why are you leaving the net, the legacy uh, of the nest that you you built originally, right? So that's kind of why I'm like, uh, do you really? And, and I'm just saying in general, do you really value legacy if you leaving for whatever reason behind one nest, okay? And, and women, hear me when I say this, okay? If that man, and you have children, okay? Yeah, I'm going to say this. You have children... And that man is saying stuff like, oh, well, I'm not going to be responsible for your children and uh, all this other stuff. Don't give him no coochie. Because if he don't want to be responsible, you know, uh, for the whole package, then he don't get, what is he doing in your bed? You know, you're not going to come and, and, and as my dad said, you're not going to treat me like the play thing and you ain't going to make me the main thing. But see, with the main thing comes some side courses like, you know, I'm the steak. And then my children are the, 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 the potatoes and the, the you know, uh, so the, with the main thing, the main course also comes other things. And so with that, if a man is telling you, well, I don't know about your children, but yeah, I want to come put my feet in your bed. You tell him no, because why you want to be in what my children came out of. But if you're going to be my husband. Cause that's what we're talking, right? You're gonna be my husband. You don't get to come in here talking about why well, I'm not gonna treat those children like yo, like mine. I'm just here with you. Nah, don't stop giving. Stop laying down with men who have showed you they don't care about 
your legacy because whether you got a man in that household or not you got children you still have a legacy don't bring them some sucker in there just to get up on top of you and talk about, i don't care about your kids i'm not you know i'm not gonna bring them nothing to eat or take it nah cut them off As a matter of fact you want if you don't let them in you ain't got to cut them off start asking questions before he even be able to hang his coat up in your coat closet okay well that, that, that that's a good opinion but i'm going to say this as well as a rebuttal men in the modern age, it doesn't matter if you if we're together or not. There's a misconception that men are leaving. That's 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 a misconception. Yes, in some scenarios, men leave, but in a lot of a lot of scenarios, women don't want to get married because they've been fed that BS by women. Whether they did, I'm gonna do it alone. I can do it myself. I don't need to get married. Whatever, girl, you got time. Whatever the deal is, society in the United States makes men responsible for their children. That's why a lot of these women run the child support. And, and that's fine. You can put the man on child support. That's great. But the point is, by doing that, he's taking care of his legacy. I mean, I, I get all that. But like I said, you know, y'all talk about talking to women, holding women accountable. My way of doing that is just giving you some good advice, sis. Don't don't sleep with these men. If all they're interested in is a piece of behind, let you know they can go anywhere and get that. But if they only concerned about their legacy, and of course I'm talking about, see, first of all, at this age, I'm like, as women, we shouldn't just be letting people and you can't just sleep. Uh, it shouldn't be letting men just jump up and down in us without no commitment. And Farrakhan talked about that not too long ago. You know, make these men commit. Commitment means marriage, right? Stop letting people sample the goods, letting people have a test drive up in it, and you know, all that. Nah, because I need to know what your intentions are for me. And if you have children, a lot of women have children, right? They have children. I'm talking about small children. I ain't talking about, you know, grown children, okay? There's no obligation there. So that, let's be clear about that. Um, But what's your intentions for me and my children and the, the emphasis in the operative word is and what's that what's the, uh, your intentions for me and my children because my children do not separate from me even if they're with their father they're still a part of me so you can't come up in here or when i say come up in here i mean you know be with me you can't be with me and just be with me because my children don't detach like Oh, because I, I hear some men say that. And I'm like, that is so silly. What woman is allowing you to treat her like a receptacle and you don't even want to even be up around her children like that? Like, and even I hear people say, I don't even need to know her parents. I'm with her. I ain't with her mama and her daddy. It's like, so you want to be isolated. Why? That, see, that concerns me. Why do you want to be so isolated with this woman? Or even if it's the other way around, why you Control. want to be so isolated? Right. What, what is it that you don't want to get to know her people or his people, whatever the case is? What is that about? You know, that's a red flag right there. Somebody who want to uh, divide alienate and conquer, you, divide and conquer, and alienate you from your family, you know, or alienate you from your children, especially if they ain't putting no ring on your fingers. Like, nah, sucker, mm -mm. that's not how it's going down or in or up or wherever. <laughs> oh man, you're you're so right on that. Like I said, it's 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 a, a complicated thing, and and it's unfortunate that she married a man that thinks like that. Because I I'm a firm believer that man knew she had another child, and it's a package deal. Like I said, and we don't know the dynamic the how the kid is in the house or outside the house. The kid, if the child is outside the house, no, he doesn't have to do a damn thing. He ain't, he ain't got to do nothing. But if the child is in the house, he should do the right thing. And, you know, because obviously these kids are growing up as brothers, right? You know, so, it, you know, that should be the right thing. But unfortunately, we're, we're in a society today where it's all about me. I'm in TikTok. It's all about me. All of this stuff has been prophesized and it's going to happen. And this is how the next generation is being raised. It's all about them. Don't worry about anybody else. Handle yourself. And with what's going on with the economy and whatever, people are desperate out here and they're just done with it. You know, they're just worried about themselves and what is going to be when you got men that are marrying women and willingly going into a 50 50 situation with the woman. Now, I understand. I understand economics. That's fine. But, brother, 
you can't be calling the shots in that house and you only paying 50% of the, the situation. It, it's, it's called the majority. You need a, uh, an, it's in stock. You need a 51. You need at least 51 to call whatever. But this is the, you know, this is the way we're, we're doing it. But like your mom used to say, and my mom used to say, you got to pay the cost to be the boss. You got to pay the cost to be the boss. So these guys that go into these situations and these relationships about I'm a man, I'm a man. Well, then be a man and do what you got to do to support that family wholeheartedly, 100 percent. Because you've got some step. You know, and again, you know, uh, I've had stepchildren, whatever the deal is, and, and, and they've been great and, and no problem with that. And they appreciate the things that I did while I was there. And I love them to death. However, those are not my children at the end of the day. And Demetra, it's, a, it's, a, it's really unfortunate that the stepfather role in the modern age gets no respect. It, it's, it's a bad deal. It, it's really, it, it's a bad deal to a, a lot of men out there. It's a bad deal because at the end of the day, you ain't my dad. You know, we, we're dealing with that kind of stuff. You know, we're, we're dealing with that and women allow it. Oh, you can't touch my child. You can't do it. So, you know, from a man's perspective, we don't know what's going on in that household, but I can say as a, as a stepfather, who's somebody who's been a stepfather, it's a no win situation. Um, and I, I, I disagree just a tiny bit. Uh, even if the woman is making 50 or uh, paying 50 percent of the bill, because we know in this economy, uh, especially in our community, uh, m most of us are not making enough money to where you can take care of a wife uh, and children. Sometimes she's got to get out there and, and add to it, too. Uh, but I still believe that the man is the head of the household and he does get to call the shots. The man does get to call the shots. Um, him calling the shots does not mean you are less than. There has to be some sort of hierarchy in the house. And if you go to church, it tells you what the hierarchy is. It's God, man, the woman, and the children, right? Um, the man is the high priest of the home. He is the one that's making the decisions, you know, whatever the case is. So you do not usurp his authority. Now, I know that's probably went over a lot of women's heads. Not y'all, but some of these one new ones come up in here. Oh, what is that gender and this, that, and the other? Not can they okay in your household? Uh, Sassafras, uh, 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 Jezebel, Delilah, whoever you are, you go do all that with, with your man. If he wants you to be doing all that, great. I don't take anything from it. But as I said, I come from the old school where I've watched the men uh, take the lead. And the woman don't that don't make her less than because listen, I'm a very smart woman. My mom was a very smart woman, okay? That don't mean you're dumb. Like you because <laughs> I know a lot of times too, these some of these men on the internet make y'all think that's what they want y'all to be. They're just a, a dean bat, right? But you can be a, a smart woman, knows how to, okay, honey. If that's what you think is best, and if she doesn't think that's best, but like, okay, I see what you're saying, but have you thought about it this way? Instead of, well, I don't want to what I'm going to do. I say it and, you know, I'm making all the money. I'm working too. I'm but calling my brother to whip your ass. <laughs> and what's going to happen is that dear man is going to go out to this grocery store every and go get whatever. And the, the grocery store is going to be some goalposts that ain't yours, you know. So I, I, I believe that the man is the head of the house. Now, I want to take it a step further and say that if you are... In that dynamic, make that your husband, you know, but make that a, a husband wife thing. That way it's a little bit more legit. But if you're not and you are a, a maybe, you know, a boyfriend and girlfriend situation, y'all living in the same house or whatever. Yeah, I think it should still apply uh, conceding and uh, being submissive. And it's not a disrespectful thing. It's just, oh, OK, I see what you're saying. But some of y'all women out there, you know, y'all been taught. To be very hard headed and combative, uh, and and tell a man what you ain't gonna do and you what you better do. And I just you got me messed up and all. No, nah, because nah. I think a lot of times too, women think that being feminine means you're weak. No, feminine means that you're just you're tapping into what you are naturally. Now some of y'all some. You know, Buddha Wooders naturally, and I get it. Okay, don't ask me what that is. It's a word my daughter uses. Y'all, it, it's, it's what you think it is. Okay, y'all rough and tough around the edges, and you, you, you know, you, you a she bear in them streets. Most men don't want to deal with that. You know, 
So feminine being feminine doesn't make you make you weak. It doesn't make you dumb. It just, you know, it's that counterbalance to his masculinity. And men, you being masculine don't mean it's what I said. Shut up, woman. No, masculine means it's your nature. Yeah, it's all right. I, I'm a, I'm gonna play my position. You play your position, and we come together. We got a a good yin and a yang, you know, and all that other stuff. So, yeah, even if he's paying fifty percent of the bills, you should still let him let him lead. Okay, it's hard as a woman trying to lead, and especially because I I have this and believe it or not, I have these conversations off of here with women that have been doing it the wrong way. Why I don't and then they'll say I don't understand why he just don't understand the other say because at the end of the day he is still a man and he is not gonna give you your way because in his mind he's like oh I'm not letting her take my manhood her barking at me all day and I said you did so that's why in your mind, young lady, you think he's not listening to you. He doesn't want to work with you. Said, so, But in essence, are you working with him? Or are you, from the moment you wake up, do this, do that, do this. Why you didn't do that? I said, one thing I learned a long time ago is, and I, it's true for women. A man don't want to feel like he in the bed with his mama. Now, it'd be hard for a man. I'm not one. But I would imagine it'd be hard for him to, after you, <laughs> that would, you know, if nothing, you'd be like, <laughs> and as a man, as a woman, that would be the same way for me. Like, damn, you, you, you sure sound like my daddy today. Mm. Just dry up, you know. And, and you know, I'm going to say this for the men. If a, a female is better at, at you at certain things, there's nothing wrong with that. Because like I said, what you lack, she is supposed to uh, be the opposite. So if she's better at finances, hey, and, you know, and your credit's in the crapper, let her handle that. And you'll be surprised your credit will go, you know, maybe it'll it'll go, it'll go get better. But that's the thing. We, you know, everybody wants to, oh, I'm just gonna be at my you know, everybody wants to go it alone. And we're not made to do that. We're not made to do that. So I'm gonna say uh Demetra Samuels. <laughs> You know, we really got to get back to the basics when it comes to relationships, you know? No, it's not a dictatorship. No, it's um, shame on those people that are abusive in relationships and stuff. Shame on them. But we got to get back to basic because it's really not about us anymore, especially if you reach my age. It's not about me anymore. It's about my grandkids and my great grandkids. And we see where we've made our mistakes and we don't want them to make, make those mistakes. Ladies, stop putting this fear of men into your nieces and your daughters and all this other stuff. Men, stop putting this false accusation that manhood is getting thoughts and 304s and treating women like trampolines. We've got to stop that and start treating women like women and say, look, what's really up, what's really sexy is getting a mate that you can grow with and grow old with and you know, that they know you inside and out and you know them inside and out. And the good thing is I've had plenty of mentors and I see them on Facebook all the time and I cringe because they are still in love today and they've gone through it all. I'm very sure there was up some ups and downs, but they are still in love today. And I see them enjoying their grandchildren and their children. And I know damn well, they're not putting that foolishness into their grandkids' heads about, oh, you know, you girl, you got time, you 10 years to be single, whatever. No, when women do things that are similar to what a man does, the outcome is totally different. If men do things that are similar to a woman, very different outcome. And you're seeing it in society today. Trans sports, this, this, that, 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 this. We got to get back to basics. Absolutely. So Donovan, what you want to talk about later, politics or something else? Well, it's kind of a slow news day, but again, uh, polit I don't know if this is politics. Uh, Hunter Biden uh, was uh, convicted, I guess, today. That's something to talk about. Donald Trump met with his probation officer to for the, for sentencing guidelines that's something that's up you know isn't it crazy that in politics now you could be a felon and be president of the united states but yet if you apply for a federal job or certain jobs they ask you if you're a felon shouldn't that be taken off of these applications now um i'm one of those people that no i don't i don't think it, it should if you served your time and all that mm -hmm. other stuff they, right. I think you should be able to go on in society. I mean, you get go to prison, you know, and I know it's not the case for him yet, yeah. if that's the thing. 
Uh, but you go to prison and you pay your time and then you get out and you have to continue to answer for that. Yeah. Uh, but the other thing is, as far as these politicians, they're all, they're all criminals. He just right. got caught. Right, exactly. And, and that's what I'm saying. It's been normalized now. And um, I, I read something about that three years ago. There was a report that said uh, corruption in the United States has been normalized. And guess when it, what it was normalized under? Citizens United. I'm about to say when when air entered the earth. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but under <laughs> citizens, under Citizens United, which the Democrats constantly say is what's wrong with politics, and even though they were in power and had everything, they didn't bother to repeal it, they didn't bother to change it or anything like that. But it is now uh, Citizens United is basically legal bribery to give these politicians money to do whatever it is that they're going to do. So again, um, it's it's just it's just sad that we're in that type of society. All right, so I'll look and see what's because yeah, it's kind of been slow. So I'll look and see what's uh training. Of course, you know, we want to talk about politics uh because we are in political season. It's just it's ever changing, it's so much going on. Well, the sad thing is, and the reason why it's so slow, the Democrats didn't hold any primaries and they told us who the nominee was gonna be, which is kind of fascist to me. And then even though the Republicans had a primary, which was great. Donald Trump didn't show up, but he became the pre presumptive nominee. So again, you know, the, we had these these outcomes that is evil or more evil. So just uh, take your poison. Yep. So we'll be back at 5 p.m. Central Time. You guys do not miss it. Uh, in the meantime, you guys be good. And if you want to donate to the channel, you can. We have ways there at the bottom. As Donovan said in the beginning, we have the African Diaspora News uh, channel app, AfricanDiasporaNews.org, where you could go uh, and invest in the app so that we don't have to spend as much time on here. Because you guys know on these platforms, we are very censored, right? But on our own stuff, only controlled and operated by us, right? That's group economics, do for self, up your mighty nation, accomplish what you will. Uh, so on our own stuff, we can be free to be us without the, you know, the overseer, what they talking about in there. Oh, they, you know, we can be us. So again, AfricanDiasporaNews.org. Thank you so much. And we'll be back um, in just a couple of hours. Peace.